Uh, this is going to be a very interesting video. I was fortunate to be able to obtain a couple of specimens of a moth that uh, lives in uh, West Africa. Uh, Eudaimonia is the most accepted genus, although Eustera is also a synonym for it. And these are very beautiful but very fragile. Look how long the tails are on that. See, that one's broken off. And that's the problem with these. They're so fragile, very, very difficult to pin. But I have developed a technique for doing this. And so I was able to get two of these. And uh, other than the broken tail, they both seem to be in pretty good condition. Yeah, the color's nice, and there's a couple of legs knocked loose. But uh, Now, you notice how discolored these envelopes are. And this suggests to me that these are actually very old specimens. Um, they could be 20 years old and have just been stored like this. And the paper uh, will t turn brown like this. It's not acid-free paper. But the specimens are still in good condition. So uh, very dry also. So we're going to use uh, the relaxing tub. And before I even attempt to do anything with them, I'm going to put them in this humidifier. See, there's just a little wet get the towel here on the bottom, see? And I'm going to let them soften up before I even try uh, to touch them at all. I think I'm going to leave them in there for a couple of days. Now these have been in the relaxing chamber for a few days, but because they're so small, I'm going to give them an injection of water just to make sure they're very soft so that they spread properly. So I'm going to hold it, the moth in my finger and use the syringe and inject just a little bit of water into the thorax. We want to make sure that the muscles are nice and flexible so that it spreads easily. These are so small and delicate that we don't want to risk damaging them by having them be too stiff. I just want to inject water until a little bit comes out. That way I know it's the thorax is full. Okay. I'll let these sit for just another hour or so and then we'll pin them up. Alright, we'll see if this specimen is relaxed enough to pin. It's been a couple of hours. Uh, it feels soft. Yeah, I think this is going to work. Okay. The abdomen seems to be loose. We're going to use a stainless steel pen on this one because it is quite a valuable specimen. This is a number zero, I think, stainless steel pen. Uh, we need a small pen, such a small moth. Um, going to Place the pin. I'm going to get the wings to open up a little bit. Boy, that's so small. Okay. Try and get it right through the center. There we go, of the thorax. And get the pin in nice and straight. Yeah, I think that abdomen's going to fall off. Okay. That looks good. Okay, I'm going to close up this box. Get it out of the way. I've got my spreading board here. And we need to get the pin nice and straight in the board. So that the moth can get pinned up straight. Make sure the pin is straight this way and this way. 
can just double check that. Yeah, that looks good. And we're going to use glassine strips to hold the wings down. And since this is such a small moth, I'm going to just going to use thin little strips of uh, glassine. Now the moth is too low on the pin. I need to bring it up at wing level. There. Let's see. Oh yeah, that looks good. Well, we take a fairly small pin to pull these wings up into place. I'm going to pin the right side down first, just to get it, keep it out of my way. And we'll start with the left side. Set the body down slightly. Oh, that's good. Pull the forewing up. Oh, now the forewing is stuck to the hind wing just from the moisture. So I'm going to take a pin and gently slide it between the wings to free it up there. forewing up so that the bottom of it is perpendicular to the body. There. And then hold that in place with a couple of pins. These tiny moths are so delicate. It's really hard. Be careful not to break it. Now that body rotated on the pin a little bit, so I'm going to use a larger pin and move it back into place. There. Now we need to get the lower wing in the right position, being very careful with this long, delicate tail. Um, gosh, you know that? Pretty good. I think I'm just going to leave it like that. This thing's curled a little bit, so I'm going to very gently nudge the lower part of the wing out so that it lays flat there. Wow, that's that's pretty good. Now, since this tail is so slender, it's curled up a bit at the edge. And I'd rather hold it down. So I'm going to use another piece of glassine. Actually, I'll just cut this off and use this piece to flatten out this tail a little bit. I don't want to smash it, but just flatten it out a little bit so it's in a nice straight line. There. Okay. Wow, it's so small. All right, now we're going to flip it over to the other side. And um, we're going to line the glassing up sheet up with this other side so that we can get the wing in the right place. Put a pin down at the bottom to hold it. Pull the forewing up into position. I'm going to get that hind wing up there too so it doesn't get lost. There, pull the forewing up into position. There. Hold that in place. Now, get this hind wing up where it belongs. I have to look at the other side to make sure that it lines up with that. It's got a little crack in it. These are so fragile. Hmm. I'm going to use a tiny little pin. And I'm going to pull that wing up and 
anchor it with a pin into the wood below. There. Now I'm going to take another pin and lift the fore wing up so that the other wing is underneath it. Hold it in place like that. Gives it a little space for it to go into. Oh! It's so delicate. I'm going to lift the upper wing edge with a pin so I can get the hind wing underneath it where I want it to go. I'm looking at the corners here where the wings meet up to see if that looks symmetrical. This one seems to be a little bit higher. It is. I'm going to bring it down a hair. I can get it. That hind wing is cracked, so it's making it even more delicate. Alright, now I can pull this pin out. Now the abdomen's all wonky, so I will brace that. It's probably going to need to be glued as well, but I'll still get it in the right position. Great. There. Now, yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm put a pin over here to hold that wing down. To see if this lines up. going to measure to there. Yes, I think that's good. Another pin on the long tail here. Now I'm going to try and get the antennas lined up. These are really tiny, so I just want to get them in at least generally the right direction. adjustment. Push it with the tweezers a little bit. Get 
another pin in there. And another pin on the other side. six pins just on the antennas. Okay, admin's still a little bit crooked. Straighten it out a little bit. I've got the other one pinned up as well. Um, these are nerve-wracking. They're so delicate. It's real. I'm really at the edge of my ability uh, to be able to pin these up. And we still have to repair the tail, so <laughs> we'll see how that goes. All right, we'll let t let them dry. Now these are dry, and I'm going to pull the pins. I'm going to start with the pins up here on the upper part first. I'm going to move this into the into a box to protect it while I pull the pins on the other one. That really turned out nice. Yeah. Look how slender that is. All right. Now comes the really hard part. Now the next step is to reattach the tails to these specimens. Tails missing on the right side here. And I have the piece. And there's the problem right there. You see how lightweight this is. If I just move my hand it blows away. And so I have um, a technique to help me deal with that issue. And this is it, a snorkel. Because in the past when I've tried to do this, I've had to hold my breath to do the work because the slightest exhale and I would just blow the pieces away. And then I realized I could breathe through a snorkel and not have that problem. So while I'm doing this, I won't be able to narrate it because I'll be breathing through a snorkel. Now, in order to reattach this, I need something to splice it. And um, this is starting to curl. I need to put it back in the humidifier. As it dries out, it's starting to curl. Uh, I've used several different materials over the years. I have some human hair that I've used. Fairly thick hairs. And uh, I've also used shaved um, bird feather shafts. You can shave them down with a razor and make them really thin. And um, uh, I've used glassine, uh, that paper I used to hold the wings down with. I've used uh, garlic skin, you know, super fine skin on garlic. But I have a new material. This friend of mine gave me some of this. This is carbon fiber. And this is apparently what they use to make airplanes with. Uh, the strands are just ultra fine compared to a hair. Uh, you could probably put half a dozen of these tiny fibers are the same dimension as one human hair. Uh, now, typically I've used water-based glue for these kind of repairs uh, with the idea being that if you make a mistake you can always 
rehydrate it and redo it. Uh, but even the water-based glue is kind of thick and lumpy and and these are so fine that it's just not going to work. So what I'm using now is super glue, cyanoacrylate glue, which grabs these fibers uh, very tightly and uh, it makes a really strong repair. The, the problem is I don't think there's any way to undo it. You've got to get it right the first time. So that puts the pressure on. So what I will do is I will take some of these uh, fibers in a tweezer and cut them off with the scissors and then apply some glue and apply it to the tail and uh, let that dry and then I'll place the tail underneath where it's supposed to go so the fibers are underneath um, the broken part on the main body of the moth and put the glue on it and then put it all down and let it dry and that should work pretty well. Uh, one of the problems is if you're using glue on a surface like this, if there's any glue that gets stuck to the wood, it will definitely mess up your project. So I will cover this wood with uh, cellophane, which the glue won't stick to, and I'll show you how to do that. So I can stretch a piece of cellophane over the board.